given that f of x is equals to 4 divided by x minus 1 plus 2 write down the equations of the asymptotes of f uh, that is 4.2.1 so you can see just from how the function looks that we have a hyperbola right uh, one of the asymptotes will be at y is equals to 2 this value here right so we're gonna have our um, horizontal asymptote so we have our horizontal asymptote being at y is equals to 2. now what we need is our vertical asymptote our vertical asymptote will be at this denominator equals to zero right uh, because we know that we cannot divide by zero so if you equate the denominator to zero you're gonna find an x value for which the graph never touches right so if we go ahead and do that we're gonna have x minus one is equals to zero and then x is simply equals to one right uh, that is easy to see so we have our horizontal asymptote and we have our vertical asymptote that is 4.2.1 right uh, the value that is in here this value right here will always be your horizontal asymptote if it was minus 3 then our horizontal asymptote would be minus 3 right that's how it works and then now uh, moving to 4.2.2 uh, uh, the equation is saying that uh, let's calculate the x intercept of f we're looking for the x intercept of f as soon as i hear x intercept so we have x intercept i'm thinking y is equals to zero right so if we let y be equals to zero in our function we're going to have zero uh, being equals to four divided by x minus one plus two what we want to do when we have something like this is to subtract two from both sides right to get uh, minus two is equals to four divided by x minus one and then if we cross multiply we're going to get minus two x plus two is equals to four uh, minus two x will be equals to two and then x will be equals to minus one so the coordinate for our x intercept right we have minus one and zero right and then now uh 4.2.3 we are required to sketch the graph of f and label all asymptotes and indicate the intercepts with the axis so in 4.2.2 we only calculated the x-intercept but then now we are required to indicate the intercepts right so we need to find the y-intercept uh, so y-intercept x is equals to zero so let's go ahead and find the y-intercept so that we can be able to sketch our graph and indicate all that we are required to right so we're gonna have y being equals to four divided by now x is zero right minus one plus two so we're gonna have four divided by minus one plus two this is minus four plus two this is equals to minus two right so the coordinates for our y intercept we have x being equals to zero and y being minus two right so now we have the asymptotes we have the intercepts we can sketch our graph let's go ahead and do that so we need our axis obviously right we cannot have it any other way so there goes our y axis and there goes our x axis so the first thing we want to do is to put our asymptotes first right so let's just say this is one two three and then this can be minus one minus two minus three and then again for the y axis one two three minus one minus two and minus three so right so let's go ahead and uh, put our um, our asymptotes in our graph right we have a horizontal asymptote at y is equals to q so let's just go ahead and have that there so there goes our horizontal asymptote and then our vertical asymptote is at x is equals to one right 
So let's uh, do likewise. There goes our vertical asymptote. Right now we just need to indicate the intercepts. We have one intercept at uh, minus one and zero, right? The x intercept. So we're going to have a coordinate right here at minus one and zero. And then the other one is at zero and minus two. So we have another intercept here. And just like that, we are almost done. We just need to sketch our function, right? Uh, if we go ahead and do that, we should have something like this. So our graph should go through our intercepts, obviously, right? And then, yeah, that is one part of our function. And the other part of our function will lie in the first quadrant, right? Right, there we go. We're supposed to have something like that. We've indicated our asymptotes. We've indicated our intercepts. I think we're good to go, right? Uh, let's do 2.4. So 2.4, using the uh, using our graph, let's determine the values of x for which 4 divided by x minus 1 is greater or equals to minus 2, right? If we take minus 2 to the other side, we're going to have 4 divided by x minus 1 plus 2 is greater or equals to 0, right? So what we're actually looking for here, we're looking for the values of x for which our function f of x, f of x is greater or equals to 0, right? Because this is simply f of x if you look at it, <coughs> right? So let's go to our function and look for... Uh, the values of x for which our function is greater than or equals to zero, right? We can see that for this entire part of the function, it is greater than zero, right? And then here from minus one, if we go to that side, our function will be greater than zero, right? So uh, part of our solution, we have x being greater than one, right? When x is greater than one, our function is clearly greater than zero, right? And then when x is less or equals to minus one, our function is also greater than, yeah, it's greater than zero. It's greater than zero. It's greater or equals to. So here uh, we can put in uh, this equals to, right? It's not going to cause us any issues because our function is defined at x is equals to minus one. But then here yeah, we cannot have any close to because our function is not defined when x is equals to one, right? So we're supposed to say x greater than one, All right? And then uh, the last equation, four point two point five. Let's determine the equation of the axis of symmetry of f of x minus two that has a negative gradient so what is this f of x minus two let's figure it out so we know that f of x is equals to four divided by x minus one plus two so f of x minus two so in place of x we now gonna have x minus two and then minus one plus two right and then this will be equals to four divided by x minus 3 plus 2, right? So this is what they're talking about when they say f of x minus 2. So we need the equation of the axis of symmetry that has a negative gradient. So we have two axes of symmetry, one with a negative gradient and then one with a positive gradient. So the one with a negative gradient, y is equal to uh, minus x plus c, negative gradient. And then the one with a positive gradient, we have y is equal to x plus c. So what you're required to do actually is to just find the value of c, right? And then you have your axis of symmetry. So which point did you substitute if you want to find the value of c in your axis of symmetry? You substitute the point where your asymptotes touch. So now we actually have to find the asymptote of f of x minus 2. Let's go ahead and do that. We know that 2 will be our horizontal asymptote now we just need to find our vertical asymptote by saying that by saying that x minus 3 is equal to 0 right 
Now you're going to see that x is equals to 3 is our vertical asymptote. So they're going to touch when x is equals to 3 and y is equals to 2. Now we just need to substitute that in our equation for the axis of symmetry with the negative gradient, right? So if we go ahead and do that, uh, y is 2, right? And then minus x is 3 plus c, right? So if we take uh, minus 3 to the other side, the way you would say it, we would have 5 is equals to c, right? And then now we have y is equals to minus x plus 5 being the equation of our axis of symmetry of f of x minus 2.